Today we're going to look at the inguinal canal. Here we're looking at the right hip from the anterior view, and the right femur. So on the right hip, the inguinal ligament is going to run from the ASIS, the anterior superior iliac spine, all the way down to the pubic symphysis. And that will make the floor of the inguinal canal that we have recreated here. So here we have our pubic symphysis, that's our ASIS, and the black down there is your inguinal ligament. So the inguinal canal runs in an inferior and medial direction. So we're gonna start here at the posterior door, which is the transversalis fascia, which creates the deep inguinal ring. So this ring right here is the start of your inguinal canal. It will travel inferior and medially to run through this space towards the external abdominal oblique and its fascia. So I'm going to come around the front. So the ex this is the right external oblique with its fibers running this way to create the superficial inguinal ring which is reinforced by the lateral crus and the medial crus and the intercural fibers here. This will continue on to the spermatocord and down to the testes. So the external oblique also wraps around to help stabilize the floor of the inguinal canal with the inguinal ligament. So the roof of the inguinal canal consists of the internal oblique and the transverse abdominis that kind of join together to make the conjoint tendon or the inguinal fox. An indirect inguinal hernia will go through the deep inguinal ring and all the way through. That's an indirect hernia. A direct inguinal hernia is deep to the inguinal canal and lateral to the superficial inguinal ring. And a protrusion anteriorly through these layers is a direct inguinal hernia.